Hello, hello everyone. Good evening and welcome to the episode number six of the series of Let's Make an Amiga Game. First, let's go to the usual uh, thing. Please uh, like our videos, uh, support our channel on YouTube, subscribe to our channel. Um, it's all encouragement, so I do not ask for anything except this. Also, um, you can go to our Facebook page and like us there or subscribe to our Facebook group or groups. Um, nothing, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's all appreciation and it gives me more motivation to do uh, more of this. If you want to support us, then you can go on a Patreon or uh, or on Coffee. The streams of this series are all on YouTube so far, but this is the last one that will be on YouTube for now, um, because I need to give something back to, to the Patreons. Um, as you can see, there is still episode 5, today is 6, so I will be uh, up, uh, uploading 6 also, probably next week, uh, but um, there will not be any more uploads to this series till I finish. Um, however, it will be quite in a good advanced state by what we do today. Um, so you practically have a small game in a way. Um, as I was saying, the book is still episode number 22 on YouTube, but there is still 45, uh, till 44, sorry, uh, on uh, on Patreon. I forgot if it's 44 or 45, let me see. Uh, I forgot which one I uploaded last, 44. There is in 45. No. <coughs> I forgot to unlock this one, but anyway, it's it's on YouTube. I'm realizing. Uh, anyway, as you can see, 5 is here. I forgot to unlock it from Patreon. So, you all recall, uh, we are doing a simple game, okay? Ignore the graphics. I'm hoping that some of you will do the graphics, but um, let's run it. And so far, we have arrived to our screen display with some text on the left. It's, it's to be able to write to the HUD and our sprite that moves left, right, and middle. Admit it, to be honest, although it's not visible, we did more than this. And today, and this is why it was bugging me, because actually we made the routine that uh, moves the enemies or displays the enemies on the screen, but 
we haven't written the routine that displays them actually to the screen. We have written, we have done them in memory. You know, we are updating the structure, the array of structure for the sprite in memory, but we are not taking that array and then plotting it to the screen. So putting the sprites on the screen and updating uh, uh, the screen. So that's why it was bugging me because in theory, we already have the enemies being displayed. Uh, it's just that we are not showing them on the screen. Of course, the text here is there to show that we are able to print to the HUD, which is this area here. So it's phase one on is there just as a test. Okay, so let's find the routine that I was talking about. Uh, this one, uh, actually I'm on it already. Um, we wrote last time populate enemy table. So basically we have a table <clears throat> and we are updating it. Uh, this table has got a, it's like an array uh, with uh, structure of uh, an object and the same object is repeated. We have an array of it, um, which I will explain in a minute um, because I even, because of it was so so much bugging me I made I made a, um, a diagram of it which I will share. So uh, I I'd, I'd like to find uh, this structure this here. So here we create it. Okay, um, we are going to populate. We made the area here for it. Okay, so we have um, six because. Um, this is, um, it's actually five, but I'm, I know why I made six, because uh, by the time last stream to this stream, I did uh, some, I had some thoughts. So the total of this is five bytes. If you notice, I, I always, uh, I, I say what they are. So this one is just a byte. This one is just a byte. This one is a word. And this one is a byte that should not be x, that should be a b. Um, so that in total is five bytes, but I know I need to use six eventually. Um, so six is the size of this one times the maximum number of enemies that we can have on the screen, which we divide, which we decided to be six. Then basically we created this routine that populates this. So each object has got these in it. Okay. Um, so object zero, the first byte is enemy active. The second byte is enemy number. Then we have the Y with the position of it and it's a word and then the X. Why, where do I have enemy? Uh, where do I have? I've written it somewhere wrong. Ah. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so that is the uh, structure that we populate using uh, this, this routine. Okay, now. We have not, this is the table with this structure, but we have two more tables, which I will explain. So I do not know how this will look in here. So let's see if I will manage, if it looks okay. Does it look big enough? Is it readable? This, the, the image. If not, I can get it into the browser. Um, Hound dog is it readable? The image.
Okay, cool. So I do not need to comp you, you, you were able to see the code next to the table. So, first of all, the what is, uh, let's say, new in a way is what's in orange, okay? But we all know that sprites pointers live into the copper. So we have a table, we have the copper list, okay, with the sprite pointers in it. Then we know that a sprite has got a structure in the Amiga, and this is the format of a sprite structure, where you have the V start, H start, V stop, sprite data, and it ends with two words. <clears throat> okay, and here I have a um, memory with sprite data. Now let's see each one of these. So let's see the copper list where the sprite pointer is left. So here we have the sprite pointers for our sprites. This tells we point this the, these pointers point to the Amiga sprite structure to one of the many that we will have. Okay? Maximum that we can have on the screen is eight, but we are going to use six. Uh, the other one is for the player, and one is reserved just in case. Because I have an idea, but for now, it's just reserved. Um, so those are the sprite pointers in the copper list. Then we have the Amiga sprite data structure. That is further down and here you have a sprite I called it sprite zero okay and then I edit so this label and this label refer to the same point and here I is a sprite definition for the Amiga okay so sprite v start h start v stop the special bits which I didn't include in my in my um, image and then spread data to keep it simple and then the end of it. Uh, team game where um, where is that team game? I wouldn't be surprised I have typos, okay? First of, first of all, you know that my issue with the hands. Um, anyway. So, that is the Amiga sprite data structure. Then we have the enemy image sprite data. So, basically here, okay, for the player, I have populated the data, okay, for the sprite. But for the enemies, I didn't. I just reserved space for it, okay. So it is 16 pixels high, and each uh, word, uh, each it's 16 pixels wide. But because it's four color, then it is like two bit place, so times two, and they are all the same. Here we have our sprite data, what we need to copy in that structure. Okay, so if we need to copy, let's say, cotton, we will have a routine that will copy this data, okay, this data here into, into there. Into that uh, reserved area. Okay, so those are the three colors, the yellow, the blue, and sign that you should know or should understand easily. What we have is the orange part, which you need to understand. So the first one here is easy. Okay, so I'm just going to go up. It's this table. And it points to our sprite 
structure. So it points to this, okay, this pride data structure of the Amiga. And I have a table with them. So I always know what address each one of these structure is at in memory. So nothing special there. Then I also have a table here, okay, with the image data. So basically, it's just a table, as you can see, which points to the data. Okay, that's why the arrows. Okay, so this points to the image data, this points to the data structure, and the pointers that points to the sprite data structure also in the copy list. However, I did not want to manipulate these, but I want to manipulate these. Because as soon as I change something here, it immediately is reflected on the screen, while I want to change things here, if needs be. And then reflect it in the copy list. <clears throat> what remains is the structure. So this structure is where we work, okay? And we read from the rest. So we get our structure, we check if a sprite is active, that is within this structure. Then we get the image number, and the image number points to this table here, which one we are reading, which one we have. Then the enemy Y, we populate it. So we have the Y position of the enemy, where it is. And we populate the structure, the Amiga structure. As I said, I have it here, not here, because as soon as you change it here, it will be reflected if the sprite is active. So I want to do this in one go, um, when I want, within a frame, not as soon as I change it. So this is why I'm updating this in the structure. And the same, we do it for the Y and the same for the X. So we have done a routine that populates this. Okay. Now we need a routine that reads this and actually displays it to the screen. I mean, put the sprite, um, basically transfer the, these, this data to the sprite so that it is displayed and becomes active. So basically what we need is we need to put the X and Y into the V start and the A start. Okay. Of course, V stop also. We need to copy the data, okay, from here to this Amiga Sprite data structure. And we need to activate the Sprite pointer based on this, where so that it can be shown on the screen because the Sprite pointers are all zero in the copy list, so they nothing is shown. So that is what's going to happen, what we need to do. So, going back to our uh, populate enemy table, okay, this is what we did last time. Now, I edit this part. To be fair, last time we did this, and then I comment it all. I mean, this I did it offline, okay? I didn't comment it while we were during the stream. I, I always comment the code that I add offline so that when I share it with you guys, you can understand everything that we did. So I commented everything, but I added this. I realized I need to pass this parameter. Um, it will pass this parameter uh, to me so that I can display the sprite in the X, so the sprite in the X position. Hence, we need to write this routine. So what does, what will this routine do? Okay, well, it's quite easy. We need a random routine that decides between three positions, left, middle, and right, where the enemy will Will be placed at the bottom of the screen okay so let's run it and i, I show you what what i mean um, so So 
So, right now, we have three positions. So, three positions where the enemies, or three columns where the enemies can be, can be placed. So, down here is from where the enemies will be coming, no? Towards us, towards the player. So, what we need is a position either here, either here, or either here, where um, the sprite, the enemy sprite, will be placed. So, that is a random between uh, 0 and 2, because we need three positions. So we need that, and depending on the random number that we get, it can, if it's zero, then it's probably left. If it's a one, it's middle. It's if it's a uh, two, right. Or we do it something like that. I mean, right now this is how I'm thinking about it. And we just put this sprite here with a y value that is somewhere down below, and the x value will be what is either uh, left, right, left, middle, and, and uh, right. So let's uh, do uh, that routine set sprite pause. Set sprite x pause, sorry. So, um, let's do it down here. This is not a long routine, so it would be quite uh, an easy one. At least in my head, that's how I see it. Oops, I need to. Um this will decide the sprite x position. Um sprite I'm going to put enemy x position. Makes more sense I think. Uh, we call it set. Right, export, and we need an RTS. I think I do. RS right RTS. <clears throat> so we need to call our um, routine that does the random. So I'm going to call random p. Okay, remember we have two, but one is. Uh, one is a very simple one, which is not recommended, but um, which is this one, which I am going to use anyway, because it doesn't work on all Amigas. The reason why I want to keep something simple. And then there is the complex one, which I have written, I don't know, 30 years ago, but I do not understand my own code. Yeah, I just found it and pasted it here. We haven't tested this routine, it should work, but I will test it some other time. For now, I'm going to continue to use this routine, routine B, the random routine B. And anyway, you guys get to choose between two routines. Now, because we need, we are only interested in from zero to, to two, no? So we can end. Okay, the value that we get in the zero because it returns in the zero. Uh, the one, two, three, four, one, two, and then one, two, comma, the zero. So, like that, we only get whatever random number it gives us. We are only interested in the first two bits. which gives us 0, 1, 2, and 3. 3 we will not use. We will use 0, 1, and 2. So, if it is equal, so if it is at 0, okay, we can do 
middle. Let's do that. Yeah, let's do let's do it the opposite way. Let's do zero as middle, one as left, and two as right. Yeah, I could have also done if it's zero, uh, go back and get another uh, number, and then we ha we have one, two, and three, mm, whatever it's uh, it's what it is. Then let's compare it to. Um, One, no, uh, one, comma, zero. And if it's a one, we said we go left. I already wrote. Sometimes I know in modern languages the auto, you know, that it finds the is, is good, but sometimes it's so annoying it I'm always uh, correcting it. So then compare so let's copy so I save a bit of my And if we compare it to two, we go right. And if it's something else, we loop again. Um, yeah, set spread. Okay, so this is so we have middle, left, right. So middle, uh, middle, we have. A, a constant which is middle and we move this we return the middle value into the zero and then I could type return here but I prefer to exit a routine because this is not a I mean we do not we are not after uh, we are not after speed here there's no speed in this game so I prefer to have it um, exit in one in one place so that I already know exit is going to be there now the same thing as I did for middle we need to do for left and right so this is left this is all what this routine will do Nothing. Else. This is nothing good here. Uh, this is. And right. So basically, we're passing the value of middle, left, or right in the zero. When we return to our routine, we move that into the structure. So this structure, this part here, okay, we have not done it. The populating of the enemy X, where it's going to be. We did the Y, but we did not do the X and Y. We set it always to be at the bottom of the screen. Uh, 
uh, it is here. <clears throat> so now that we have, of course, um, when you when I share the code, uh, you're going to get comments here, okay? But um, I think this this code is simple. It's quite explanatory, self-explanatory, I think. So we have done that routine. Now, what we need is a way of reading this and, of course, populating it. Now, before I go there, uh, I uh, sorry, I'm displaying it. Remember, when we every time a certain time passes, we uh, we spawn. Okay, we initialize the spawn timer again. And we populate the table. Of course, there's a, a limit how much, how many we can have on the screen. So there's a check. If if it's full, then we do nothing. Basically, it will immediately check if it's if it's uh, an active sprite. Then it will go through all the structure and quickly realize that there's nothing, and so it will do nothing. Uh, but and uh, we have a timer when the timer pass we go and populate the structure so now i can uncomment it unfortunately calling this routine will not uh, display anything on the screen but we have in, if we go in main where we have the main loop of the game okay we have uh, a routine that needs to be done, which is so update respawn. We've done it, and update respawn will call that routine of populating the structure. Now we need to do this okay, update enemy screen. Uh, I'm just going to assemble to make sure that I have no issues, to be fair, um, and actually run it. Why not? to make sure that I don't have any issues with the routine that I just created. I mean, it's quite a fair, simple routine, so it shouldn't. Oops, there you go. So what are the problems? Exit. So exit has got some issue. Ah, of course, it needs to go in. Unless there's something else, exit, exit. So let's see. Okay, seems the code passed. So it's assembled. Doesn't mean it is correct because although we are calling it, we are not seeing the effect of it. If it crashes, we know it's there's something wrong. But I don't think this routine can crash what we have done so far. Okay, so it's still it's still the same, but we are calling this routine now. And we had already tested that this last time. I mean, tested it. We know that it's not crashing the machine because testing it uh, is when we see everything on the screen. Um, so we need to write the routine that, uh, which is this one actually. Um, because I just saw it. So last time I had discussed it with you guys. Um, let's see. So we need to do this. The update enemies to the screen. Okay, so we're going to create this routine now. I'm just going to call it the same. And go below the other one. Okay, so so we have this. Uh, I mean, I'm going on I'm on the screen on the on the image now. So we have this structure, and we need to somehow go through the structure, loop through the structure, and this value we transfer them to the Amiga sprite data structure. Yes, 
Um, yes, of course. That's another reason why I'm calling the registers directly because those registers are not common. Let's put it this way. And like that, you can see, you can go and check them and see what they are. <clears throat> so it's like a flag to me. So, uh, I okay, so uh, because I'm losing concentration. Sorry, sorry, Ozzy, I, I just need to concentrate on this now. So we need to move zero into D4. I could use D3, but I'm going to use D4. And we need to move, uh, get the enemy table string DC because it's relative in the same section comma zero. So we initialize the, the zero the four with zero. Oh, this I really hate. Okay, now well, I, I asked in the beginning, nobody said it's small, I made it big, but nobody said I can make it bigger. Give me a second. That's the maximum I can make it. <laughs> so, uh, we need this is I'm, th I'm thinking here um, we need to check if the sprite, uh, if this, if the, if this sprite for this structure is active or not. Uh, hello, Copper. Oh, sorry, I didn't read that. Let me check. Uh, Copper Dean, thanks. Thanks for the follow. Much appreciated. Um, we are writing a simple game uh, for the Amiga um, based on the book, but only the first seven chapters of the book. So um, the book that I stream each uh, week, well, not right now because I'm on holiday, but except for this one. Uh, but normally Saturday I stream in Italian and Sunday in English um, the book uh, of Fabio Cucci. Um, and I'm showing that with the first seven chapters, you can write a game. So. Um, so we need to check that what we have in a zero is not is zero. If it's not, that means it is populated. Hence, if it's zero. We need to branch somewhere, uh, and that is there is no update to it, and somewhere down here I'm going to write no update, and then we see what's going to happen in no update. Uh, now this I am going to do, yeah. This is not needed, but um, I'm still going to do it. 
I could use it so that I can use move quick. So as to make Ozzy happy. I'm going to clear out these registers. We shouldn't be doing this, but right now in my head, uh, because I know I will need to use them, I'm just cleaning them to make sure that they are at, at, that I have a value of zero, even though I will not use a long. But I do not want the long, the uh, any anything to affect me. So now we need to get the y value of the sprite, right? Uh, yeah. So move dot word because it is a word. Yeah, but. Now it should be big enough. Now we'll see. Well, I hope. So it is 2, offset 2 from a 0. Okay, so we know it is. Um, so basically, this sprite is active. Now it is there already. So if it's there, if it's. If it's um, active right yeah so if the if in the zero we let's say have a value whatever that value is okay we, we, it should be one or i forgot what i what i decided either one or fx i can't remember what we decided i will check like it up, look it up but doesn't matter zero means it it's deactivated um so if it's deactivated, then there is no no need to update it on the screen because it's it's not active. But if it's active, okay, so if the value is greater than zero, then we need to read the y value of it. So that's what I did to break it at zero, which is two is the y of the enemy. Okay, and then we need to check. Uh, so when we are in the middle, the speed is different. And we haven't created a constant for that yet. So, okay, let me do one thing. Sub dot uh, word, because we are working on a word. Um, okay, for speed, because we change speed when we are in the middle. Now we need to declare that. So for a moment, I go here and find constant. Yeah. And we need something. Call it for speed. And this should be a byte. Let's make it a word to be in alignment with what we read. The even is not needed, but we can leave it there doesn't matter so because the y value needs to be decreased because it's coming towards us okay so but if it's outside the screen and outside the screen we can have either is zero or minus one because the variation of the speed for now speed I'm just going to make it one So even in the middle, we have, will have one. But so going to equal this, and somehow if it's zero, we need to deactivate this sprite. Yeah. 
if if it's minus one so now this minus one is f f f f uh, I do not want to confuse hmm So if we have that, we also want to deactivate the sprite. Okay, so we decremented the Y and we are making a check. Um, and then we need to move it back. No, we need to move the value of the zero. If it's not, if it's not zero, or if it's not minus one, then we need to update the structure. So, move dot work. Uh, zero. Two, three, eight, zero. Branch or not equal to S. Yeah, we need, in this case we update because we need to call our universal routine for sprites. But if it's not, yeah, we have the deactivate because first. Deactivate. Even if we are deactivating it, we still need to do to use the universal routine. Uh, no, no. I still move. We need to move zero, so we need to deactivate. Yeah, so move dot byte. Okay. For a moment, this is this is in mind. Immediate zero, comma, eight zero. So like that, we are deactivating this structure for that object. And we also need to reset the Y of it. As it will stay on the screen, or it will show on the screen. So move dot word. And We're going to do this. It should be sort of five six plus sixteen, its height plus one, probably from up to zero, and then we move the zero into two bracket eight zero. Okay, so then. But I will need the D zero because it's used by the 
by this sprite move routine. Yeah, so the zero needs to be preserved now. Hence, we do the zero comma two eight zero, and we should not be touching eight zero anymore. It's zero anymore because that's one of the parameters for the routine. For the y, okay. So so here is where we have the update of error. Okay, so now we need to update it. Hold on, this is the no update. No. So the zero we already okay. We need to get the enemy sprite structure address. Yeah. And that we will need to use D4. So move the uh, byte. What we got a four uh, up uh, up in the beginning. So we know it's the zero because the four will be incremented when we finish this routine. Yeah. Uh, move T4. So let's prevert, preserve it also into the one. Then we need, uh, what's it called? We need one of these enemy sprite table. So, NDA. Um, okay. Now we need to multiply by four. So two comma. We're shifting to the uh, left, okay? LSL means logical shift left. And if you do it by one position, it is times two. If we do it by two, it is times four. And we're doing that because the structure, um, the enemy sprite table, each one of these is four bytes. So we need two get one of these uh, address pointers that we have here. So if it's one, then, sorry, if it's zero, then it's this one. If it's one, it's this one, so it's four. So four times one is, is four, and four times zero is the first one. Anyway, um, into the one. Mm. Yeah, wait, not into the one, shift the one by four, okay. And this is that makes more sense. <clears throat> and then move dot word A two. Last loss, the offset that we have in D1. 
I want the one. So we have the actually this should be a one because that's what the sprite uh, uh, the universal sprite uh, routine needs. I mean, I'm talking about the universal sprite. I can show it to you. Um, where is it? We did this in the book. Oops, I wanted it in the other screen. It needs these parameters. So that's why I said before, um, where is away? Sorry guys. Need to switch here and go to back to here. Okay. This is where we are. And this is the universal spider thing. And this requires these four parameters. So that's why I said A1. And that's why I said D0 is uh, reserved <clears throat> so so far we have passed d0 and a1 now we need d1 and d2 so we need to pass the x so That is move dot uh, byte. So x is in the fourth byte of our structure, and we pass that into the one. So we have another one ready, and then we need to pass the height. But we know what is the height, so another one move dot byte. Right. I believe I declared this before in the constant. I forgot if I had declared it or not. No? Okay, so. Let's do it here. And we need to put that into D2. So we have these four parameters in it. So now we should be able to call our sprite, the move sprite. So and it is called move sprite. Now, that is we have up we have shown what is in the, the object on the screen. Once we have done that, we need to go to the next structure or next object. So we need to do an add quick long to 
um, add zero. This structure is five right now, eh? or six. Right now it is five. I'm reserving six, but it is five. It's zero to five. So I'm going to add five. We need to add one. Two. D4. Then, if we went through all, now D4 is a long, so we need to compare long um, with max. So screen, comma D4. And if not, we need to loop. So if we haven't reached, if we haven't uh, went through all the whole array, we need to go back. Uh, what shall we call it? Yeah. Enemy update. Yeah. So next enemy update goes to. Yeah, I guess. Oh. So. Let's see how many errors I have. I think this is the routine. I, I'm just reading it in my heart right now. This one we said is a one. Eventually we will need to change this. So the fall speed by how much we fall down um, needs to change depending on the position where we are. So right now we are just falling by one. And if to be fair, they are moving towards us, not us moving towards them. It looks like we are moving towards them, but actually they are moving towards us. Um so when they passed us, so when it's zero or minus one, then we will deactivate the the structure. But we still need to do the update. It still needs to happen. And we position it at the end of the screen. Well, let's see. I'm, I'm just uh, not sure about my, my logic. But Save and run it. Oh, it assembled. Okay, that's a good one. Ah. We're not going to see anything on the screen. Because we did not call this routine. Okay. <laughs> okay. So let's go to the main loop. Save it again. And let's run it.
know if this works. I mean, yeah, right, nothing is happening. Good one. I thought, oh, yeah, we have something going up. Oh, okay. Oop, and it crashed. So, somewhere we have an issue. Boom. There you go. The joys of coding. Now, to find the issue, it's going to take me, because there are three routines to check. One is the update of the structure, one is the position where it starts, and one is the display on the screen. So I'm just going to I was hoping it works immediately, but yeah. That's the dream of a coder always, no? That the routine works from the start. So one of one of the things that I noticed is that the data is not correct. So that is in the populate where is where we populate the data? This is the copy routine. So A3 and A1. So A3 points to this is the source. And we're getting that from the enemy image sprite table, which is here. So we are just multiplying by 4, adding it to the base address. That is A3, and we're moving it to A1, and A1 points is our destination, and A1 points, we're adding 4 because of the offset of the structure. Hmm. should be correct should be but it's not working so okay let me start from top and try to reason it so First of all, I'm going to just do one sprite. Let's do that thing. Like that, I only have one structure, one object to deal with. I'm not going through the whole uh, object. And same thing I'm going to do for the update. I am not going to branch back. Now, let's see what happens. I should only have one sprite on the screen. If we are right with that. Oh, just the protein is not working either, so yeah, it's crashing. We do get a sprite moving, the joystick is not moving, but the data is still corrupted, so that's one thing, we only have one.
Yeah. Uh, this is this is this is the fun of assembly, no? Trying to fix uh, bugs. So yeah. Um, <clears throat> Let's not call. Let's not call because that that is curious that the joystick OT was not working. So that that is annoying actually. Where is it? Here. Let's not call the this one, the last one that we did. Like this, we should still have the joystick routine working. And update spawn is still doing um, the population, let's say, of our sprite. So let's run it. So, yeah, so definitely our bug is in the routine that we just added. Everything else is working perfectly and it looks like we are doing something wrong on the, in the structure. Okay, so let's check again our routine. Which is this? <clears throat> so this part is correct. I mean, there's nothing that is wrong there. Here we check that the what we point to at a zero the contents of a zero is not zero if it is then there's nothing to update obviously because the sprite means it's deactivated so here i should write zero equals Deactivate the, the, the. In fact, that's what we do here. Although, where are we writing that it is deactivated? Ah, here. We're using the moving zero into a zero. So, yeah. And the zero points to our structure. Sometimes this doesn't convince me. I know it's I think in my head this is more clearer just to make sure that I'm initializing these to zero because these are parameters that we need to pass to our move sprite and I'm going to find move sprite just to, for my Uh, 
and I'm just going to make those comments up here. Because when I'm checking the routine, I know what I'm referring to with each one of them. So now, D0, D1, and D2 are initialized to D0 for sure before we pass them. So, 2 in our structure is the y. So this one is y. And depending on that, we subtract. Oh, oh, that's that's the issue because that's a constant. Yeah, I think that's the issue. I, well, there could be more issues, but that is an issue. Uh, hold on. How did I declare it? As a constant or as a byte? That's a good point. No, I declared it as a, as a word, so no, that is correct. Uh, so we decrement one. If it's equal to zero, we go on the activate. If it's minus one, we go on the activate. If not, we move that value into two, yeah, what we read, into a zero. And then we do update. If not, the y needs to be, then it needs to be deactivated. Yeah. We need to move. At five plus sixteen plus one, and then this zero into two bracket eight zero. So, yeah, this is all about setting the y value. Here we read a two into a two. We what we preserved in a four. We move it into D1, we multiply it by 4, eh, eh, we, we, that word, that should be wrong, into A1. Yeah. Yeah, that is an issue for sure. Let's run it. Mm. So, what is the other? <laughs> of course. Nobody spotted that. So let's try that again. Does it still work? Yeah. 
Okay, hold on. The routine is deactivated now. So. We should see at least one sprite. If we enable this. Only one, no more. So. Does it still work? Yeah, still work, and we're calling it this time. Uh, finally, we have one sprite. Okay, it's moving very, very slow, and that I know why, and we're going to fix that. So, the routine is working, but we need to enable. Okay, so, first of all, Guys, remember, we did uh, this. We're going to... Let's remark them for now. This is a trick that we learned from the book. To slow down and do it by uh, for more, in more than one frame. Um, so, these are not needed right now. We only need one. The one on top. So... Let's do that, and let's enable this one. That's one thing. Now we need to find... We're nearly there, we're nearly there. I'm going to do it within two hours. So, this one, we need to remove this. And populate enemy table. We need to uncomment this. So if it worked for one, it should work for all. Let's prove my theory. Let's see. Come on, show me, yeah, you see, oops, it crashed. So we have some other problems somewhere. But the speed was there. Um, so what happened? It was in the, let's do it again. I I'm, I'm, didn't quite catch what happened there. So it did one, but then when it came to do the second one, sort of failed so let's check it check the whole process with just one sprite then yeah so let's check the whole process with just one sprite so let's do this i'm getting there and that one and I just want one structure. Uh, and this. Okay, let's see if it crashes just with one. Okay, so with one so far it hasn't crashed. So 
of course we don't have collision detection so and they are all coming in the middle that is not that that i'm not happy with let's see if it changes no still in the middle okay so that that they are coming in the middle i do not like it that means that we have in the set sprite x here we have something wrong with the random i guess so first one is all right is that correct? One, two, three, four. If it's equal to, we go into the middle. I mean, here, as I said, that could be returns, but just for keeping it within the same loop, within the same routine. And if it's so if it's zero, if it's a one, if it's a two. So basically saying that uh, hmm. okay let's I'm going to call routine Let's see. Never test it and see what it does. I don't even know if it returns into zero or not. Oops. <laughs> Definitely in a different position. But always in the same position. And the reason being that what value does it return? Where does it return? R and D. Still the zero. So if it's the zero, why it is not? So what values have we set for middle, left and right? Those are constants, no? Nothing wrong with that. Okay. Let's accept that they are all coming in, in the middle. Mm. Let's accept that for now. That they are all coming in the middle. However, there's still an issue um, that when we loop, we crash. So somewhere we are either one, I believe it's in the last routine that we wrote. Um, the issue is in update enemy screen. It's in here. I believe it's this one. But when we update here, these are doing something wrong.
So let's get the Yeah, so here there's only a byte, zero, two, three, four. So in total that is five. So we add five. Even though we are reserving more space, doesn't matter. We are using five. Unless, am I writing a word or a byte here? So in populate am i writing in the x set sprite x but i'm writing a byte uh, of course for testing last time we did this Ah, this needs to be removed now. <laughs> of course, they are coming in the middle. No matter what random number we get, we are forcing it to be in the middle. So, problem solved. That was last time for testing. So, what remains is this part. So, let's run it again. So, now they should not be coming in the middle. Um, I'm just going to do that. Or now, it's not nice eh, debugging on the and <clears throat> well, I don't know, maybe some people enjoy it, but I don't. Um, I want it to work from the beginning. <clears throat> you see, now they are coming at a different position for sure, yeah. Now, the only thing is that we always have one sprite on the screen. Um, and we need six, no? Maximum. So, let's, <clears throat> let's see what's wrong with this one. So, I'm going to enable the populate I believe this is fine I we would have seen it if it wasn't hey, hold on yeah we add one if it's six then we exit yeah we start from zero no the three yeah so that's that's perfect. I believe here we are fine. I'm just going to run it again. I'm pretty sure it's the other routine that is um, causing issues. No, 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 no. So we enabled this and we immediately crashed. So the issue is here then when we go and do the next one. Because the other one, um, hi, hi, Daniel, thanks for the follow, much appreciated. We are debugging the simple Amiga game that we are doing. Um, <clears throat> Unfortunately, it's in English and I'm not sure I understand what you wrote there, but um, 
What do you mean? I'm in England. I'm speaking English. I think. <laughs> So, but originally Maltese, okay, but I'm speaking English and I'm in UK anyway. No, I don't. Unfortunately, no. I can speak Italian, but Italian is not Spanish. So, yeah, but I'm, uh, well, sorry, my friend. So, um, this routine, let's keep it. Maybe I did wrong, populate one and not the other one. Definitely, it's here where we are causing an issue or or here where we have an issue because still here without this it's all fine it's when we go and loop again that we have an issue this would be incremented by five. D3 will be incremented by one. Still okay. Still okay. I'm just going to run it again. As soon as the second one comes in, it crashes. So because that's what's happening, it's trying to populate the second one and but it crashes. Mm. Either populate or trying to display the second one, one or the other. So let's bring them both to the screen. So if this is the populate. And let's bring the other one, the update. Now we have them both on the screen. I mean, this one is so simple in a way. The update enemies on screen, there's not so much logic. Um, at least in my head, doesn't doesn't need so much logic. Oh, <laughs> so. If it's something stupid like not missing a hash or something like that, you know, because it happens so many times. Because I wouldn't be surprised it is something like that. And that's what I'm looking for, to be honest, um, to see if I'm missing something like this.
Um, uh, is this card I thought I'm going with? Yeah. Did I, you know what? Like that, the high byte I'm pretty sure is zero. Wow. Uh, oh. Hold on. Let's do that. But this is when it's reset itself. We haven't even arrived there and it crashes. So now, anyway, leave it like that. We will um, change it if needs be. So. Then we jump to the routine, then we add 5, we add 1, we compare, and we branch to next enemy up. I really cannot see what's wrong in it. I really think it's here, yeah? More than here. So, if I do this, and I leave this to populate, this would only get a one. <laughs> In fact, if I disable that routine, it never crashes. If I disable the routine, never. If I if I disable this routine, yeah, this one, it never crashes. So I do believe it's in here. Yeah, it must be because if I do not call this, okay, update on the screen, it doesn't crash. That's why I'm thinking that the issue is here, not here. Um, if we go here, if we don't call it to display anything on the screen, It doesn't crash. Or at least I hope it doesn't crash. I'm going to leave it for a bit now. 
that means the the cycle although we see nothing on the screen it means that something is happening ah no it crashed oh 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 Oop, stands to be corrected yet so now we have this which is causing an issue hmm. So, so far, makes sense. This should be okay if it's active. If it's not active, it's a zero. I'm just going to make a comment. Can be removed. Is that or this is or I'm going to do for the graphs. No, I could even be there. Ah, you need to go. Yeah, it's okay. I mean, eventually we'll find out what the issue is. I'm pretty sure it's something so simple that's driving me Nuts. Sorry if I'm silent, I am just running the code in my in my head to be honest to see what I must might have what I'm what I might be missing. I'm just going to put this also in. Just put it up to five sides. And the reason why is the universal routine, I don't think it handles. I'm not sure, I need to check it. The funny thing is it was not crashing with, without the other routine before and now it is crashing. So what have I modified in it to make it crash? Or maybe before I did not leave it enough time. I don't know. But I'm going to give it a try again by me removing that value. So, at the top, we should have 
We are not going to see anything on the screen because the routine is disabled. And I'm just making sure that I'm calling the right render routine now, just in case. Yeah, so let's run it. It's fun, no debugging. It's always like that. Mm. Started in the cache now. That was too quick, in my opinion. Yeah. Funny enough, it's crashing. So, what did I add? I add this before, and I had made it. I'm moving by hit zero into four. Let me hit zero. Ah. I'm The main thing also is because this was working before we added this routine and before we added the other one. And I'm finding it strange that it's crashing on this without this being even active. So it should not crash. If it's, if it's crashing, it's, I'm missing something. Trying to understand what I changed in it. Hmm. I think what is wrong with it? What did I change to make it I added this but now we are not even calling it. Maximum enemies on screen. Six. So that's correct. That is such a mystery when you have a routine that works and then all of a sudden it doesn't. Yeah, not even. 
one and the other one and only update respawn I'm calling and update respawn calls the populate and then returns yeah so what changed here that is making it such a big issue I told my partner I'm not going to be long because I only need to do two routines and that's it. But <laughs> to, be, to be fair, I'm running out of options and I think I'm going to see it online if I don't see something here that I need that I can, uh, you know, fix. It must be something so stupid. Uh, okay. I think I have to take it offline. It's uh, it's. I don't think it's nice for you guys to see. Uh, sometimes assembly can be like this. What I do not understand is. This routine, when we started, this was not crashing the, uh, the Amiga at all. And the only thing that I added was this, these two lines, which I removed and I put back what we had. The rest, still the same. So I'm lost as to why it is doing it. Okay, let's call it a day. And yeah, guys, sorry for this. Um, I thought I would be able to um, do it. I wanted to finish this part. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm going to find what the issue is and it will be something so simple. Thank you. And bye-bye.